good afternoon, everyone. It's so great to be here with you today. Um, just a quick little bit of background about NACU, just a level set on our organization. NICU was founded in 1976, and we began our work supporting people really who were mostly working in regulatory and compliance environments, people who are working in quality departments. Our mission has stood the test of time because we've adapted to the needs of the market, and today we are working with more and more people who are working in full and part-time quality roles and people who see themselves in our work, which I'm about to share with you. And more and more, we are taking our work to the clinical front lines and really making more and more of an impact. I think what's really unique about the constituents that we represent and the stories that I'm gonna tell you here today is that we are more like-minded than we are like type. And that means we can be better together and that everyone can belong. So a few months ago, I was uh, having a simple outpatient surgical procedure. I was chatting up the nurse who was taking care of me, and I asked her, did you have any infections at this organization? She said to me, no, not really. We do pretty well with that. And so then I said to her, well, who here is responsible for managing quality and safety in this organization? And she said, oh my gosh, it's me. She said, I, I just got assigned a couple of months ago because the person before me left and they just dropped it in my lap and I have no idea what I am doing and I hate it. It is like the worst part of my job. <laughs> so a couple of weeks later, I followed up with my GP and I shared this experience with her and I said, I was so troubled by this. And she said, Steph, I hate to break it to you but we pretty much all hate quality and safety. I was horrified because at these organizations, what quality and safety meant was compliance. It meant jumping through the hoops, checking the boxes, and passing tests. At NACU, we believe that quality and safety is actually the best path to achieving excellence. And we're in the process of taking our words back. We also believe that workforce readiness for quality and safety has been misunderstood and neglected for too long. So our focus at NACU is really about unleashing human potential to make healthcare better. So I just have a few minutes here with you today and I have two main objectives. Number one, I wanna share with you that I believe quality and safety cannot live in isolation and that safety will be best positioned for success when it locks arms with its natural partner of quality. And I'd also like to share with you some research about the readiness of the workforce. The headline is, we're not ready. And we have data to prove it. So let's get started. So NACU's perspective is that quality and safety are inextricably linked and we have created a competency model that expresses this. Our competency model has eight domains, 29 competencies, and 486 skills. The competency domains include quality review and accountability, professional engagement, which is also inclusive of ethics, quality leadership and integration, performance and process improvement, population health and care transitions, health data analytics, patient safety, and regulatory and accreditation. Isolating any one of these domains is the pathway to a missed opportunity. And we believe strongly that when quality and safety are united, we will become more powerful as a community and as a movement, and we will make more progress on safety. Second, I'd like to share with you our research. In healthcare, we spend all sorts of time trying to reduce variability in healthcare delivery, as we should. However, we spend very little time reducing variability in healthcare quality and safety competencies. At NACU, we created the first and only database in the world that knows who does what level and type of work pursuant to healthcare quality and safety. We did this by to getting together a panel of experts and we twice validated our model in the market. And then we pulled data 
through an assessment that is done actually by the people doing the work. This is not an assessment of competency, but instead it's an assessment of the work that is actually being done pursuant to quality and safety. So it's a work study. And then we produce workforce reports. This is a slide from our workforce report, which you can find on our website. So when we look at this, we uh, query people who are working in full or part-time roles in quality and safety. I'm gonna walk you through this in just a second. Respondents have clinical and non-clinical roles. They work in departments of quality, infection prevention. They may be clinical service line leaders. It's, like I said, more like-minded than like type. And we ask them to uh, select the skills and behaviors that best express their work, which we have organized on the back end in those 486 skills to be foundational, proficient, or advanced level work, skills, behaviors that you would expect to show up. We also give them the opportunity to say, I don't do that, but only after they tell us if they should be. So first we say, are you responsible for this work? Then we ask them to tell us what work they're actually doing. And what we see here is really interesting. So on the top left, we have a three, this is based on a three point scale. And at the top, the areas that the industry is performing the strongest in are quality, leadership, and integration. That's a 1.98 out of three. Next, regulatory and accreditation, followed by safety. Good news, although we all agree we're not far enough along on that journey. The areas that are not doing as well, at the workforce is not performing at higher ends of the competency spectrum, are in population health, care transitions, performance and process improvement, health data analytics, engagement and ethics, and quality review and accountability, which is all about those physician feedback loops and even tying it out to payment models. That is over here on the far right. So this pulls through and blue is advanced, green is proficient, yellow is foundational, and gray means I don't do any of those things. I do not see myself in the work NACU, which is based on the validated standards. So then we wonder, what are they doing? 64% of people work, say they work in the domain of quality review and accountability, yet 32% did not identify with the work, which includes those feedback loops. I could go on and on about this, and I would love to someday, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, I would invite you to read our workforce report. And I would also tell you that these data are true um, almost no matter how you look at the data, regardless of the level of the contributor, the clinical or non-clinical background, the size, shape, type of organization that we're querying or the people, the data is almost always the same, at least at the highest levels, which tells us we are further along in some areas, not for, far enough along in others, and we have a long way to go overall. Another thing that we are able to see is benchmarking. So we can take this aggregated data set and we can work with organizations who want to see how their system is shaping up, who is doing what work, and do we have our bases covered here? Because what our model represents is not only the work that people should be doing, but what it also represents is a, a understanding of all of the things that must be present in a high functioning quality and safety organization. So we can benchmark between sites and, and, and regions and, and all sorts of things, but this is one of my favorite slides because these bars represent people. These bars represent people working in quality and safety. These people have the work in the same system, in the same region, and they have the same job title. And you can see the variability in their work. The level of work that they're doing and the type of work they're doing, represented by the color and the keys on the side, is highly variable. And this is almost never intentional. We have a high degree of variability in the workforce, and now that we can see it, we really, really need to address it. We have a solution that really is taking individuals and teams from where they are to where they need to be, but we can only do that now because we know. When we talk to people who are working in quality, leaders of organizations, they tell us they know something might not quite be right at this region or with this hospital or with this individual, but, but they can't put their, their thumb on it and they, they don't know how to solve for it. And so that's what this data really supports. 
I was also really struck by Robert Ferguson's comments earlier today. I thought he said it very well, that the healthcare workforce is in crisis and they really need our support. They don't show up to work wanting to look like this. And half of the people working in quality and safety roles fund their own education. This is a huge responsibility for healthcare executives, for regulatory and accreditation organizations, and so many more, and individuals, like the ones who are participating in the fellowship, who have taken ownership of their own continued professional development. So we believe that unless and until all these pieces of the puzzle come together and that we are proactively and intentionally putting our system together and understanding it, we're just gonna to continue to make these marginal improvements. And that isn't okay with me and my family and all the people I care about. I know it's not okay with you and all the people that you care about. And I'm so sad about the stories that we've heard today. It is not okay and system sustainability and supporting our workforce and getting people to, to do their own best work and then work as a team is really, really one of the most important things we could do to move this forward. So we need to activate a strategy that puts workforce readiness at the center of the plan because hammers don't build houses, people do. And I'm not talking about another in-service. I'm talking about a model and a plan supported by a rally cry to take workforce readiness to the next level so that we can move upstream and solve this with education and training and support in workforce organization and alignment. So this is more than just an idea we have. In the past 24 months, we began to execute this work at local and regional and in some cases national levels all over the country. Uh, much like the work that Peter just shared that he's doing, it is important and it's powerful and it definitely is a work in progress. We're absolutely learning as we're going. Today we're working with the Veterans Health Administration. All 18 visions are aligned with this framework and they are moving the framework through first the quality infrastructure of their organization and then they will pull it through the rest of the entire VHA. The largest health system in the world is starting to align to a competency standard. And we're also working with small organizations like Augusta Health in Fishersville, Virginia to accelerate their workforce too. And we're working with leaders like Robin Betts who is here today and will be presenting on a panel tomorrow at Kaiser Permanente where we're working with Robin to help assess, organize, and upskill her team to do their best work. KP is leveraging NACU's Workforce Accelerator idea, and it really makes me happy that even when we're not side by side and shoulder to shoulder with Robin, that she is leading this with her team. She shared with me all sorts of things that they're doing to build their skills and their knowledge and their culture to really advance on quality and safety. And yesterday, I loved a story she told me. We bumped into each other uh, at lunch. And she said that her team takes timeouts now. And she calls them accelerator moments. These are moments where they are celebrating the wins they're making with a holistic view of quality and safety and their really intentional focus to prepare their workforce. These organizations and many others are really working with NACU to create a structural standard and systematic way to hardwire quality and safety competencies into the work, moving upstream and making sure that workforce is prepared to do their best for all of us. In closing, I will share with you, this is totally doable. We can do this, we are doing this, and through our efforts at NACU and all the other efforts that so many people have been talking about today, I believe that we will be making healthcare better and that we will have a huge impact in the future. And in the process, the words quality and safety, we're taking them back. They're not gonna mean compliance anymore. They're gonna mean excellence. Thanks everybody.